What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Jay, and we are here today with some team builder shenanigans. Yes, we are with my little feature, my little puffball right here. Cause you know, I just sometimes just gets in my face. But uh, anyway, um, we're here building a team. We're going against the Lansing Leafions, coached by Kyogre Kawhi. Um, if you don't know, he is the other undefeated coach. He took over a team who already had one loss, but ever since he's came into the league, he's been winning. He's been on a roll. So we can we consider him undefeated. So it's me and him are the only undefeated people up in the league which is super 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 hype this is like a prime time match so it's gonna be a big deal as you can see on the screen i have placed his mons before you so you can view the squad with shuckle mammal swine g max hatterene lucario vikavolt bisharp chandelure heliolus turtonator uh, arctovish and umbreon all right and so the first six mons are what i think he'll bring so, like, looking at squad, um, he's always brought G-Max out of ring because, of course, this is G-Max. Um, and Mammal Swine, he's always brought because he either runs it Scarfed or Banded. And then Shuckle because Shuckle's just tanky and it can put up a bunch of hazards. It can poison things. It can do all the, all the shit that you don't like to see in a battle. So... Those three for sure are coming. Shuckle, Mammal Swine, and Hatterene are coming. He might not bring Shuckle, but I feel like he definitely will. So, because he'll probably want to... Uh, set up sticky webs on my side because I have fast like my team is pretty fast if you look at my whole roster like speed is something that we're we're proud of we're just some zoomy motherfuckers you know what I'm saying um but uh so I feel like he'll definitely bring those three the next three Lucario Vickavolt and Bisharp are like I don't know I feel like he's definitely bringing an electric type um because we have Rotom we have Milotic we have um Quillfish so those three mons, he definitely put in work, and he might be scared of bringing them. And to check those, he might bring Vikavolt or Heliolisk. Um, he might bring Heliolisk because Heliolisk is dry skin, so it completely walls the water type, so we can't fire off water type moves. Um, so I could see him bringing Heliolisk over um, Vikavolt, but Vikavolt with choice specs hits hard as hell. So, like, the last three mons are things that I'm not, like, completely sure about, and I don't really care if he brings. Um, Lucario kind of puts in work. He hasn't brought it at all. <laughs> since he's battled in like uh the five or six battles he's done hasn't brought lucario to any of them but he might bring them to us because uh lucario i mean the only thing i'm worried about lucario for is darmanitan and tyranitar are the only two things really or beetle handles it pretty well kamo'o ain't worried about no lucario um rotom if he runs physical we can handle it so i'm not too worried about lucario honestly um that's about it uh bishop i could see him bringing just to check uh, Gengar, really, that's the only thing I could see him bringing it for, um, Chandelure, I could see him bringing, he kind of runs like a fun set, like with Hex and will o Wisps and stuff, so, if he wants to burn stuff off, he might do that, because we're bringing, uh, Darmanitan and Kamo'o and all that stuff, but we're running special Kamo'o this week as well, so it doesn't really matter, um, I already talked about Helios, if he wants to do some, uh, <laughs> shell smashing shenanigans with Turtonator, I'm not really worried about it, because we're bringing Tyranitar, not Guja this week, and Tyranitar with, the set that we're bringing, Walls, Walls, Turtonator all day, every day. Um, Arctivish, not really worried about it. It's a slow thing. Um, so, Fish's Ren isn't as scary because it won't pop off first. Even if he's Choice Scarf, he's just it's slow. It's like base 55. So, with the Scarf, what is this? It's like pushing like maybe like 170 or something. Like, I don't know. I'm not worried. I'm not really that worried about it. I'll have to look at what it would look like with a Scarf. But I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Umbreon, he might bring for a wall because he doesn't really have any walls. Looking at his team, he has no tanks aside from Hatterene and Umbreon. Those are the only two tanky mons and maybe a defensive mon in Turtonator, but nobody really uses it defensively, more so offensively. Um, Chuckle is a tanky mon, but its HP is abysmal, so it's easy to get rid of in like two or three hits. So that's the squad that I've analyzed all his mons. I'll have to do a little bit more into it because, you know, he might run choice uh, uh, Scarf. Chandelure just to handle Gengar and stuff and now speed stuff. But I'm not really worried about Chandelure either because Tyranitar walls it as well. So it's all good. So I'm going to get to our squad right here. So of course we're bringing Whirlpool with Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Will-O-Wisp, and Defog. So Defog definitely have to bring this week because Shuckle is a threat. It's a threat hazard wise. I do not want to deal with webs. I don't want to deal with stealth rocks. So definitely have to get Defog up. Um, another thing is... it Rotom handles Mammal Sign really, 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 really well only because we don't get affected by earthquake and we resist his ice type move so he either has to hit us with like a superpower or a knockoff and that's all he really can do so rotom walls um mammal sign really well so that's good for us because mammal sign is scary as hell with a scarf or a band so definitely don't want any of that happening to us because that's that's just that's just too scary 
Next up, we have Dandruff with Substitute, Belly Drum, Icicle Crash, and Fire Punch. So this is a fun set, and because I feel like he'll definitely bring Shuckle and most likely lead off with it, it depends on what he brings. If he brings Vigable and stuff, he might lead it out first, but I think we go ahead and lead off with Rotom. I feel just to, because I was right, so we lead off with Rotom. So if he leads off with Shuckle and we lead off with Rotom, that's the best case scenario because we can both switch out, go out into Darmanitan. Um, he'll probably try to get webs or stuff up. He might go for a Toxic, which will be really unfortunate. I'm hoping he doesn't. Um, but if he goes for Toxic, then it doesn't matter. Because it kind of hinders our set here. Because we're running Substitute and Belly Drum. So we're going to pop a sub up. And even if Shuckle goes for like a knockoff or something, it's d not breaking our sub. It has to hit us twice to break our sub. Excuse me. Um, and then we just set up a Belly Drum. And we're running the Salic Berry. The Salic Berry, which increases our speed when we're at like a quarter of our health. So if we can get Belly Drum and then pop off the Berry, and then we just sit here and Fire Punch away. Honestly, that's all we do. Because uh, the only thing though, I, the only reason why I wouldn't straight up lead Darmanitan is because he runs Rocky Helmet on Shuckle. And so when I'm get down to my quarter of health, if I go for a Fire Punch and hit it, and then I have, well, I, I can hit it one time and deal with Rocky Helmet damage, but if I hit it twice, I die. So there's no point in setting up in that scenario. So I really need to, hopefully he leaves off Shuckle and then we can leave Rotom and then we Volt Switch and we get out of there and then we go into Darmanitan, which would be great. Um, I could see him definitely, if he's bringing Vicavolt or Heliodisc, I could see him leading Vicavolt predicting the Rotom uh, lead, but I don't know. We might lead Darmanitan first and then go out into Rotom, if anything, because that might be a, our best bet, strategically speaking, because we lead Darmanitan. Um, I don't know, because then... <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. I don't know. Um, but uh, Darmanitan basically outspeeds everything. Even if Mamoswine is scarfed, we outspeed with the Salic Berry boost. Because um, we'll be in Zen mode at that rate. So our speed and attack are -hoo -hoo, skyrocketing. Um, and I'm bringing Icicle, Cra Icicle Crash instead of Icicle Punch simply because G Max Hatter, if he chooses to Gigantamax to avoid being swept, um, Icicle Punch literally brings hattering down to like one percent like one health like it lives on like one to seven percent health and so i have to bring icicle crash for the extra power we are risking a miss but it'll be okay because fire punch is everything on his team aside from arctivish well we can't really do with arctivish if we're even if we're at plus six honestly but we'd probably fire off a fire punch because it's neutral and it might probably take it out who knows um but yeah fire punch is everything even uh knocks out chandelure because it's like plus six and Chandler's frail to begin with. So we handle everything pretty well. The only thing we have to worry about is priority and Bisharp. If he brings it with Sucker Punch. And then also Vacuum Wave on Lucario if he runs special. Or Bullet Punch if he runs physical. So those are the only two priority moves I see on his squad. Um, that's, But I mean if, if Darmanic can get, it, can get in there and knock out a bunch of Mons. Like two or three Mons. That would be great. We'll be fine. Um, what else? I think that's all we have to do on Darmanitan. It definitely depends on who he brings and who he leads. So that's that's all dependent on, on what he does. <laughs> so hopefully we can get to use this set. It'll be great because the one time we brought it, I think, against Titan. And we never got to use it because we never sent Darmanitan out on the field. Anyways, next up we have Big Boy the Tyranitar with Stone Edge, Crunch, Iron Head, and Earthquake. So we are rocking Assault Vest this week. Um, simply to deal with Vicavolt. Uh, Turtonator, Chandelure, and um, Hatterene. So, Assault Vest, uh, we're calm natured, so we have all special defense, all health. We have like some health, like 224, and then we have 32 in attack. And so, we have Stone Edge Crunch, Iron Head, Earthquake. I think I already said that. I don't know. I'm just stuck at circles. And we got. So, the reason why we're going to go ahead and run like calm nature and stuff, because we eat all special hooks pretty well, even from like a Choice Specs Bug Buzz. Tyranitar eats it pretty well. We, we eat it. With half our health so that's fine it's like a two hit ko which is good for us because then we can easily go for a stone edge and put in the work and like close come close to killing vicavolt or knock it out i think um um aside from that i brought iron head just in case um but he likes to run weakness policy sometimes or he might run um uh what's it called uh a berry to weaken like certain damage and i feel like he most likely will bring weakness policy because I do believe Hatterene eats anything we hit it with from Gengar. So I, I have to get some type of damage off. And even if we go for Iron Head, um, I just brought it in case the situation calls for. If I need to do more damage and then I can come in and KO with Gengar, that'd be great. So I, I can risk the weakness policy at that point. 
but honestly i'll probably go for a crunch since it's neutral damage so iron head's just there as of right now but you never know uh we could get flinches and stuff but i probably will go for a crunch if if i send in tyranitar against hatterene if the situation calls for i i would prefer not to but tyranitar is here to take care of a lot of bulk so we are bulky boy big boy next up we have teeth of course returning our boy with sludge wave shadow ball focus blast and nasty plot so nasty plot in case something wants to switch out and we outspeed everything on his team unless he's running scarfed um chandelure and scarfed uh, uh blah, 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 mammal swine so those are the only two real scarfers i'm really worried about i can't see him running scarfed heliolisk um he might because we do out he we outspeed uh heliolisk like by one speed point because heliolisk base speed is 109 gengars is 110 um so but i can only see him running specs if you run scarf then he runs scarf on heliolisk if he brings it that, that that's a little unfortunate but it is what it is um but if we can force a switch out with uh teeth and pop up a nasty plot and then go ahead and go to work like we're looking pretty so we have a lot of sweeping options as of right now which is great because he doesn't have a lot of bulk and so he can't really switch it switch in and out and whatnot um focus blast like hits his team super hard it deals with umbreon arctivish heliolisk uh bisharp lucario mammal swine and shuckle so fighting type here is like we that's why we are <laughs> look look at this lovely bridge look at this lovely bridge right here we're going into kiwi so we have to bring kiwi this week for sure we're bringing clanger soul clinging scales aura sphere and flash cannon with this throat spray of course um main reason i'm running aura sphere instead of focus blast is because of uh misses um focus blast is a 70 percent chance move and if i pop off a clanger of soul i want to stay in i don't want to sit here and like miss all the time because i didn't bring a 100 percent move so aura sphere is also stabbed so i feel like we'll have good power it'll be at plus two so i think we'll be okay um we'll outspeed everything at that point um what else we got like it just it's it's stab and it hits everything pretty hard uh, it doesn't hit chandelier because it's a ghost type and we don't hit Terminator that well but we have clanging skills for those two which was great Flash cannon solely for Hatterene, but like I said, it might do weakness policy, but if we can uh, fire it off, I mean, he probably will switch into it, but if we can fire it off, and even if we get the weakness policy drop, a plus two flash cannon is probably going to do around half or more. I'll have to calc it because I haven't calc the flash cannon damage, but I feel like it will do around half or more, um, and then we can bring in Gengar and just kill the Hatterene straight up, so we don't have anything to worry about. Um, and then next up, last but not least, we have UFO coming this week. Um, he's returning after last week because he put in the work. Um, but we're running a fun set on UFO this week. So we have Iron Defense, Calm Mind, Recover, and Store Power. And you're probably looking at me like, why the hell would you run this set? Because he has two dark types. He has Bisharp and he has Umbreon. But if we get those two out the way, or if he doesn't bring them at all, which would be, oh my god, that would be great. Um, Orbital puts in the work. Orbital I'm also bringing strictly to Wall Hatterene because if we get it in, fire off some calm mines and some iron defenses and then just recover stall a little bit not stall but recover to get our health back um because he probably will be running mystical fire and that's going to lower our special attack but i'm not worried about special attack drops because it doesn't matter because we have no investment in it this is um max hp max special defense i didn't do speed because we're now speed hattering either way because hattering is base 35 so um calm mine if we get up like two or three of those with like an iron defense um we'll be we, we can do like solid damage to hatterene with stored power even if it resists um so he's here simply to take care of hatterene because i don't want to just leave hatterene up to tyranitar so that's what we got there and had orbital also like he can resist a lot of things when he has the boost he could take he could take care of vickable if he wanted to he could take care of lucario um he could take care of mammo we can also take care of uh shuckle but um shuckle is like eh um what else honestly i could lead off orbital to try to get an orbital sweep but if if he brings dark types then it doesn't matter there's no point because it just there's nothing to do since uh, we can't hit it with a psychic type move and that's pretty much the squad i'm feeling pretty good about our team it's just more so play wise i gotta make sure i do the right plays this game because it it matters we, we're two games away from a perfect season just two games away from a perfect season we are six and oh just need to go eight and no that's all we need to go to playoffs um but that's the squad i'm feeling I'm feeling pretty pretty good about our team the only thing i'm worried about is just like i said play and the leads so lead leads mean everything um i just might straight up lead darmanitan and then if i have if you lead shuckle it's, uh then i'll just lead rotom but if it just depends on if he brings vickavolt or whatnot but then again, if he does, 
If he leads Vickavolt, I definitely need to lead Darmanitan. So I think I'm gonna lead Darmanitan if he brings Vickavolt for sure. Because there's nothing there's nothing really I can do in that situation. There's no safe switch in. Um besides Tyranitar to take a incoming Volt Switch or Thunderbolt. Uh but that's really all that it comes down to just leads. Leads determine the game for me, um, play-wise. So that's about it. Because if we can get the leads right, then we will be fine. Easy peasy, easy sweepings from there because we have Kamo O, or Beetle, and Darmanitan that can possibly oh and and Gengar to possibly sweep. So we're bringing a super offensive but kind of bulky team. I'm really digging it. But that's gonna be the video because I keep looking at the team, making sure I'm. I'm just thinking about everything, make sure everything's all good. But that's about it. Um, hopefully, uh, we can snag a dub. We'll find out. You'll find out on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. EST. Um, but without further ado, I am your boy Jay, and I'm going to go ahead and get up out your hair, and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye.